until you learn the lesson, you are going to keep living it. So how do we get out of this hamster wheel? Step one, you have to acknowledge the problem. Just ask yourself, where is unhappiness breeding in my life? And if that's too broad, narrow it down to today. Where did unhappiness breed today? And did it happen yesterday and the day before? Do you keep living the lesson because you're not identifying the root of the problem. You have to identify the theme and the root of your problem if you want to stop living your lesson. If you want to learn it, you have to go deep. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Life Coach Meg Ellis, and today we are talking about mistakes. So if you are somebody who is constantly in this place of, oh, how did I get here again? This episode is for you. So hit that subscribe button. We're going to be talking about why we keep making the same mistakes. And I'm going to be sharing some powerful mantras to help you get out of this hamster wheel of repeatedly making the same choices in life that are not leading you anywhere good. We're going to learn some easy to apply techniques to stop repeating said mistakes. Get off that hamster wheel, get off of it. And I'm actually gonna dip into this really cool concept. It's a metaphysical concept of soul contracts. So we'll hit that up at the end. Let me ask you this. Do you remember that movie called Groundhog's Day? It's an old movie, I wanna say the 90s. I do remember watching it on VHS, so I wanna say it was the 90s. But Bill Murray, He's this, he stars in it. He's this, I think I, if I remember correctly, this really cocky news anchor. And he gets caught in something called Groundhog's Day where he lives the same day over and over and over and over again. So he wakes up the first day and he, he has his, his day and he goes to bed at night and then he wakes up again and he's like, wait a minute, I'm having the same day that I had yesterday. It's actually Groundhog's Day. So the same, you know, repeats, uh, celebrations of, hey, is the groundhog going to pick winter or, or spring? And then he goes to bed at night. It's a little weird. Deja vu. -y. Did I dream that? And then the next day, same thing. He wakes up. It's the same day and the same day, and he ends up being stuck in Groundhog's Day. And it's really this interesting, kind of funny movie, uh, but the whole moral of the story is, sorry for spoiler alert if you have not seen this movie from the 90s, but you've had 30 years of no spoilers, so no shame here. He ends up getting out of Groundhog's Day when he learns to be a kind person. It's kind of the moral of the story. And that brings us into this first point of stop making the same mistakes because this powerful mantra, do not forget this, until you learn the lesson, you will continue to live it. Mm, I'm going to say that one more time. Until you learn the lesson, you are going to keep living it. First thing that comes to mind, that's it. Stick to that. Let's talk about it. So how do we get out of this hamster wheel? Step one, consciousness, right? You have to acknowledge the problem. So whatever you just thought of, that's probably uh, uh, the lesson that you're not learning and you're continuing to live it. So if you didn't have an idea pop into your head, just ask yourself, where is unhappiness breeding in my life? And if that's too broad, narrow it down to today. Where did unhappiness breed today? And did it happen yesterday? and the day before, right? So just start asking, it can be little things. It doesn't have to be these big groundbreaking ideas. Uh, it can be something as easy as, well, unhappiness, where did that breed today? It can be something as little as, I live with a roommate and they're really gross and I'm typically a clean person and it's driving me crazy. Or I was unhappy when I couldn't stop overworking and I couldn't find the time and the ability to be present with my family, so I feel like I missed out on that. Or it could be something as easy as I can't find a romantic partner, right? This is where unhappiness is breeding in my life. And I'm gonna use a situation that happened to me, uh, and I'm gonna walk you through uh, this whole episode with my example. I'm a soul cycle instructor, if you did not know that. And a couple of years ago, I found myself in a really unhappy place with soul cycle. 
um, because I just wasn't progressing as much as I thought I was going to, right? We were coming out of this pandemic, fitness took a hit, and I'm teaching all of these classes, and there, you know, some of them only had a few people, I wasn't getting promoted, and I was just really in this place of unhappiness with SoulCycle. And we're going to lead, I'm going to walk you into step two of this, because you have to identify the theme and the root of your problem if you want to stop living your lesson. If you want to learn it, you have to go deep. So if you think about it, why was I so unhappy with SoulCycle? And this is where you have to have a really honest, conscious conversation with yourself. And guess what? It's not going to be fun. I will tell you that it's not going to be fun, but it is going to be worth it. A second question you're going to ask yourself. So first question, where is unhappiness breeding in my life? And the second question is, where else has this been an issue? So let's use our examples. I live with this roommate. They're really gross. I'm typically a clean person, and I'm not telling them that I want them to do their fair share of the work. Well, that comes down to I don't like confrontation. Hmm. Okay. Where else is that popping up in my life? Well, I actually did it with my uh, romantic partner. I didn't really stand up for myself here. And then uh, I actually didn't tell my boss that this other person didn't get this report to me because I didn't want to have a confrontation with that person. So you start to identify this uh, theme of confrontation being the issue, right? Because you keep living the lesson because you're not identifying the root of the problem. So you keep seeing it pop up or, uh, well, okay. Unhappiness was breeding for me when I was overworking and then I I didn't stop. So I couldn't enjoy this time with my family. I couldn't even be present for them. Okay. Well, where else has that been an issue? Well, I'm overworking here and I'm doing this and I'm, I'm not delegating this because I want it to be perfect. I just, I can't seem to turn off my brain at work. So I never leave work at work. So I might as well just work at home. Well, it turns out, mm, well, I, I can't really ask for help. Okay, yeah, I'm not asking for help. There's all these areas in my life that I'm not asking for help. So you just got to spend time with it. Or we can go back to uh, the unhappiness is breeding with me not being able to find a romantic partner. Okay, so we'll just start asking, well, why has this been an issue? Or where else has this been an issue? Or let's get a little bit deeper. Like explain more about this issue. Just deep dive into it, okay? Well, I can't find a romantic partner. And again, honest conversation, that sucks. Because you come to the realization, well, I'm actually making decisions that reflect a poor self-worth. And yes, this does require a certain level of acknowledgement and a a certain level of self-awareness. And you don't have to sit in this, but you do have to get there to properly acknowledge and treat the right problem, right? I sitting with these things that you don't like about yourself, it sucks. It really does. It really sucks. For me, mm, okay, I'm not really happy with Soul Cycle here. Like my classes are, I'm not filling up. I'm not getting the promotion. Okay. Um, they didn't pick me for the promotion. That felt really crappy. I don't like not being picked. Well, where else has this showed in, in my life? And I went way back well, you know what? I was I stayed in this toxic relationship that I knew was not good for me, but I really just wanted them to pick me. And then that kind of goes back to this theme of, you know, uh, as a kid, I always kind of felt not really seen by my mom, not really loved by my mom. I know she loves me, but I didn't really feel that way as a kid. I felt like I just really wanted her to pick me. Okay, well, I'm starting to thread these ideas together. I really just want people to like me. I really just want to be picked. I just really want people to approve of me and just say, hey, like, yes, good job. You're the best. We pick you. Hmm. Okay. Now we're starting to get to the root of the problem. And here's a word of advice. You are continuing to live the lesson instead of learning it because you are treating the result. The result is 
me being unhappy with Soul Psycho. I almost quit like three times. <laughs> that was the result of a deeper wound, which was needing people to like me and approve of me and pick me. And here's the thing is, I didn't learn it with my mom. I didn't learn it in this toxic relationship that lasted years and years and years. So I had this opportunity with Soul Cycle. It's the same theme popping up in all these areas of my life. So with Soul Cycle, I had an opportunity to either live it again and have it pop up somewhere else or learn it. And thank God I chose to learn it because it gets really old after a while. Trust me, I'm sure you feel the same way. You're like, why am I still here? How did I end up back here again? It's because you're treating the results and not the actual problem. I mean, imagine if you had this big slice on your arm, right? And it's bleeding, it's all infected, and it's like oozing out. And you're treating the ooze. All you're doing is just dabbing it off with a little Kleenex. <laughs> What's that going to do? It's going to treat it a little bit, but the deep infection, no, we got to get some Neosporin on there. We got to get some antibacterial stuff. We got to clean everything. No, you can't just treat the ooze. So I want you to think about where in your life feels really crappy, but you're just treating the ooze because you're not willing to go a little deeper into where is this coming from? And when I tell you this part sucks, it sucks. But it is so worth it. Your life will change because you no longer have to live this uncomfortable lesson that is holding you back in life and making you feel crappy. So it's worth it. Learning that I had this deep fear of people not approving me, being addicted to being liked, and I had to be the best, I had to be picked, that was just keeping me on this hamster wheel that I was never going to get off of. I could have continued to, to live that lesson forever. But you have to stop the hamster wheel. And stopping that hamster wheel is probably one of the most painful things that you will ever do. But it's better than staying on it forever. That gets real tiring. And so when you come into these deeper, more self-aware concepts that are, go deeper, oh, I don't like confrontation. Why? I, I'm really bad at asking for help. Why? I'm making decisions that reflect my poor self-worth. I have poor self-worth. Why? I'm addicted to approval. Why? That's where the gold is. That is where you're going to discover deeper versions of yourself. And that is when you can truly begin to heal and no longer live the lesson because you'll learn how to overcome it. Step three, take responsibility. And I love this, this quote, right? With great power comes great responsibility. But I even love that quote when you flip it around. With great responsibility comes great power. I'm telling you, take your power back because you're going to need it to overcome all of these deep-rooted issues, okay? And I never use that word need. I will use it here. So how do I do this, right? How do I do this? It's not easy, and a lot of people don't. If you see those people spinning in circles, staying on the hamster wheel, they're not learning the lesson. They're going to live it forever. It's hard. It can feel hard to do this work. How do I even do this? Well, one is just the simple consciousness of it. You have to acknowledge it. You have to dig deep. You have to identify that root. And then you have to accept it. And there's a lot of power that comes with the acceptance of, hey, it's okay. I'm not perfect. This is my lesson down here, right? This is my, my journey. This is part of me. It's part of my human experience to overcome this. And so this is why I love life coaching, to be honest, because it's such a helpful tool. So whether it's working with a one-on-one -on -one coach or finding a, a therapist or a counselor or taking a course or even just talking to somebody about it, even talking with friends. If you have a good group of friends who are supportive and can help you and you connect on that deep level of trust, talk to them. Get it out on the open because you might find somebody else who has that same thing that they're wanting to overcome. Be a leader. Talk about your feelings. If you don't know what your feelings are, write them down. There's so much power in journaling. 
And there's so many resources out there. There's books, there's online courses. I have a whole online community that is literally meant for this. So make sure you check that out. I will tag that in the show notes uh, of a way that you can get your special offer. It has coaching resources, it has meditations, it has a whole community where you can meet like-minded people like this and we talk about stuff because we're all trying to heal. We don't want to keep living the lesson. We want to learn it. So check that out in the show notes. Um, to see how you can access these tools to help you learn the lessons so you no longer have to live it. Because aren't you getting a little sick of living it over and over and over? It's like, what do you think is on the other side? And when you start to dive into that and you see the other side, you have to let go of everything you left behind. You have to forgive yourself. It is okay that you stayed on the hamster wheel for as long as you did but you're not going to do that anymore. Forgive yourself. It is okay. We're human. And that uh, leads me into this uh, last little part here, which I think is a really cool concept. And, And this has actually helped me come to terms with this lesson, right? Um, of, of no longer living it. We learn it and it truly is a lesson. And this, there's this metaphysical concept called, soul contracts. And if you're not familiar with what they are, there are these uh, agreements that our soul has before we come down and have this human experience. Our soul is up wherever you think souls are before they come down to earth. And there are these little contracts. And if you can just imagine your soul, and it's up there with all these other little souls, and they've never experienced human contrast. And they have this desire to say, hey, I want to go down on earth. And I want to experience human contrast. I want to see what it feels like to have human emotions and all these experiences and overcoming hardships. I want to do that. Now, mind you, souls have no idea what they're actually signing up for because there's no contrast where where souls live. And so you literally sign up for a lesson. So for me, I said, okay, this is this is what I'm going to do, right? Just imagine like a little soul up there saying, flipping through a little book and saying, hey, okay, I'm going to sign up for um, uh, being addicted to other people's approval. I think that sounds really cool. I, I wonder what that's going to feel like to overcome that. Okay, so that's going to be my lesson, my little check mark. And when I overcome the need for other people's approval, that's when I'm going to get like my big check mark and all the other souls are going to say, yay, you learned your lesson. Good job. And then here, here, here's what else I'm going to pick. Uh, I'm going to experience insane grief when the person that I thought I was going to marry, when uh, when they die. Yeah, they're going to die at the age of 23 and, and I'm going to have to get through that grief. Okay. And then guess what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to to ignore that. I'm going to ignore all my feelings because I think signing up for um, not being able to deal with negative feelings, that that sounds good. And then I'm going to take that into a, a marriage. Wow, this is getting really good. And then I'm going to get divorced. I'm going to see what that feels like too. And the whole time I'm going to be addicted to the approval of other people and not make any choice for myself. Hmm. That sounds cool. Who wants to come down with me? So that is literally what your soul agrees to. It's this contract, and that is a soul contract. You're a literal lesson on earth. And one concept that I absolutely love is your soul tribe. And this is actually, this concept has allowed me to have better relationships and has allowed me to forgive a lot of other people and not hold grudges and get past things to enhance and have better relationships with people because your soul tribe is, uh, everyone's looking at your whole little story here and it's like, okay, oh wait, here, you want, you want to be addicted to approval and it's going to start with your mom. I'll, I'll come down there and and I'll be your mom, you know, and then, oh, you're going to have this relationship with this person. Uh, the approval that doesn't go away from the mom, you're going to carry that into this relationship. Oh, well, I'll, I'll come down and I'll be that person, you know, and, and so forth. So you build your soul tribe and everyone is in agreement and they all have these roles. Okay, when I'm down there, I'm going to get divorced from you. I'm just, you know that, right? I, I'm going to be that person for you. Okay, and again, these souls, they don't know this. What, what they're signing up for. But hey, we're all showing up together down here. And so your soul tribe is made of people who have traveled around a couple goes go-abouts together. 
And if you, you can always identify people who are in your soul tribe. When you meet somebody for the first time and you have that instant connection, it's like, man, I feel like we've known each other in, an, in, a, in another lifetime or we got so close so fast. We just get each other. Those people are probably in your soul tribe. And I know this idea sounds a little out there, but this is actually a huge part of my soul's mission, my soul lesson, my soul contract of no longer searching for people's approval and sticking true to my authentic self, because this is important to me. Whereas I'm no longer living this lesson of, oh my gosh, what are these people on my podcast going to think? They're going to stop listening. I have to talk about things that uh, I, I think they want to talk about, not things that I want to talk about, because uh, they, they might stop listening to my show. You know, No, that's me living that lesson. And me talking about something that is, is really important to me that I firmly believe in and I've seen help so many people, that's me no longer living the lesson. That's me learning it. And this is when you start to step into yourself. So you literally have these soul lessons that you come down here with and it says, okay, check mark, approval. Okay. And so you, you go through all of these things and they, they really suck on the human side. But if you could picture, you know, the, a bunch of souls cheering you on up there, like, Hey, you're down there. And you, you went to, uh, overcome the need for people's approval. And you're like, on the human side, it's like, man, this feels crappy. You know, I didn't get this promotion with soul cycle. I I'm, have this toxic relationship that still didn't pick me and they're making me feel like crap. And my mom, you know, she's never picked me. She just doesn't like me. Let me just mold myself into what I think she thinks I want to be. And your soul's, everyone's up there like, Hey, you got this, you got this. And you start to connect these dots and it really sucks when you start to realize, Oh my gosh, I think I'm addicted to people's approval. And all the souls up there are like, oh my gosh, they're putting it together. She got it. She got it. Keep going. And they're like cheering you on. So when you're going through it and you're realizing all these things about yourself that like are really hard to accept, just know you have got a bunch of people up there cheering you on. So keep going because you literally have a lesson in life that your soul is attached to. It is contracted to. So keep going, whatever you know it is, that feeling, you just know it. Mm, I think it might be here. Start exploring it because that is your literal life path to overcome this. And I know you can because it is truly within you to overcome it. You have everything you need to overcome whatever you're struggling with. You do believe in yourself and you are not alone in that. So explore it, journal, read a book on it, uh, join a course, join a community, hire a coach, hire a counselor, talk to your friends, do something to no longer live this lesson, but to step out and learn it. And in order to learn it, you got to learn about it. So that is how you're going to get out of your own groundhog day. Okay, stop living the lesson. We're over it. It's time to learn it. So you're going to acknowledge, hey, where am I having some unhappiness? Where am I having, having some problems in my life? And you're not going to treat the ooze. We're going to deep dive into it. Okay, where else is this popping up in my life? What are the common themes? What is the deeper issue? And then you're going to take responsibility for it. And you're going to take your power back for it because you have everything you need to overcome whatever you are struggling with. It is truly your life's purpose to do this. It's your life lesson and you got this and you don't have to do it alone. So acknowledge it, identify the roots and take responsibility. Take your power back over this because you got this, you do. That's what I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, I know it was a little out there, but I'm going to keep going down this path because that is my lesson that I am not going to live anymore. I'm going to learn it. So we're going. Go out and live your authentic life true to you. Do it. And if you know somebody else who could also benefit from this episode and go live their authentic life, overcoming these lessons, send, it, send this episode to them. Um, it means so much when you do share this episode with your friends. When I see it on Instagram and I see people sharing it in their stories, it, it truly just makes me so happy and grateful. So thank you. It allows the show to grow. It allows you to grow. It allows me to grow. It allows us all to grow. So 
that's what I'll leave you with. Of course, it's going to be this the same way as always. Expect good things always, and they will happen. Thank you.